Think of any superstar, any celebrity, any A-lister from the last 50 years, and odds on they'll have been very gently and politely put on the spot by Michael Parkinson. And they all paid to get in, that's the thing. Though, as he himself admitted, whenever he sparred with Muhammad Ali, he lost. You're a crowd puller, and Frazier's not, is he? Why is well, that? Well, number one, he's ugly. <laughs> He has no rhythm, no footwork, no class. He cannot talk. <laughs> and who told him he could sing? He could not sing. When the chat show was everyone's evening entertainment, Parkinson provided some of TV's most memorable moments. <laughs> Michael grew up in a council house in the village of Cudworth near Barnsley in South Yorkshire. My expectation was to go down the pitch, so that's what my generation did. I was the first person in my generation to actually, in my village, my family, to, to break with that and not go down a pitch. I became a local reporter at the age of 16 and worked my way from that. Michael swiftly progressed to becoming a TV producer before landing his chat show at the BBC in 1971. <laughs> Scheduled to run 10 weeks, Parkinson ran for the next 11 years. Do you ever get fed up of each other? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. He looks the same to me now as he did 30 years ago. There's a joke coming up, I guarantee you. <laughs> Go on. It's about time he did something about it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Almost a joke. Almost a joke. <laughs> but certainly, of course, um, and we had an example while you've been here, that the press picked up on the fact that uh, you arrived wearing the same suit they claimed as you were wearing in 1978. It's older than that. It's older than that. <laughs> I can't imagine you in the army. You're a sergeant as well, weren't oh, you? I can't imagine it. Well, because you're hardly a man of sort of military Are you being... bearing. <laughs> Is it being personal? <laughs> no. No, no. Yes, you are. You're being naughty, <laughs> Michael. I was sympathising with you before because you said you had a bit of a bad throat tonight. That's true, yes. One's <clears throat> cutting. <laughs> yes, uh... His love of Yorkshire was strong, <laughs> particularly his passion for Yorkshire <laughs> Cricket Club <laughs> and Barnsley <laughs> FC. That we used to put the chalk wickets on there and play cricket there all day long. And then in football season, my mate used to go there and throw a tennis ball, and I used to head into the top corner. <laughs> and it's Barnsley playing in the FA Cup final, beating Man United 10-0. In 2014, he returned to his roots to guest edit the local paper, and he visited Barnsley's hospice. One lady who was speaking to, clearly not long left, and he just went in, sat, sat down beside her, held her hand, spoke to her for about 10 or 12 minutes. And then he just said, right, love, I'm off now. It's been lovely to meet you, cheerio. And he just quietly wandered out. And this woman had got tears in her eyes. And she just said, I, I can't believe I've just been interviewed by Michael Parkinson. I can die a happy woman. And that's the kind of impact he had on people. Uh, he, he was a, a sort of very down-to-earth celebrity who never had lost that touch of speaking to people and connecting with them. I don't want to be an icon. Have you ever been to Greece? After a 16-year break, the BBC revived Parkinson in 1998. Horrible. Cracks all over their face. Oh, I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it was a female snake, but it used to mourn in my ear. <laughs> The show made stars too, in particular Billy Connolly, his most interviewed guest. And then it took to go on. Oh. <laughs> Occasionally, difficult encounters made headlines. Well, but you are a movie star. Yes. By choice. But, uh, but seemingly. So, you've got a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Notably, he regretted getting exasperated with Hollywood actress Meg Ryan. In 2004, he made a surprise move to ITV and brought the curtain down on more than 30 years as a chat show host in 2007. He listened to everybody. That was the, the thing. Mind you, when, when he was... when we were t together, then he was a good chatter and I was a listener. Knighted in 2008, in retirement, he took on the role of Dignity Ambassador for the Elderly. He married his wife, Mary, 54 years ago, and they have three children. Today, his family announced that after a brief illness, Michael Parkinson died peacefully at his home last night. Among the many tributes today, Stephen Fry said Parky's genius was that unlike most people, and most of his guests, me included, he was always 100% himself, on camera and off. 
Eddie Izzard said he was the king of the intelligent interview, while Elaine Page tweeted, a legendary interviewer, we will never see his like again. And his good friend and former cricket umpire Dickie Bird said, I just don't know how I will cope, I will miss him so much, there will never be another Parky. I'd love to talk to you about, you know, the, just in the November, in what's believed to be Michael Parkinson's stars, last you know, TV star, interview, he told Dan what had always been, been the best part of his job. The favourite moment, you know, you can see it in their face, you can see it in their relaxed posture, that they now they've enjoyed you, they've joined you in a, a conversation. You've got it, you've caught the fish. And that's the moment you look for.